What's up guys, welcome back. I have another video for you. What we're gonna be analyzing today is ultrasonic leak detection. There's very few videos out there. I hope to dig into the myth and what exactly they can and can't do. So far, the results have been very promising. I've been pretty happy with it and I wanna share those with you. First of all, if you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button down below. Click the little bell there so you're notified when I let my next video drop. And let's go ahead and get started. First of all, there's all kinds of different leak detectors out there. Here's just a couple of them that I've got. All right, for the detectors I normally use, you got your big blue, you got your H10 Pro, your TIFF ZX, you've got the infrared field piece, and then you've got the Inficon gas mate. Each one of them have their strengths and weaknesses, just like anything out there. The R290 and R600, any of the combustionable uh, refrigerants, you're gonna need the uh, Inficon there on the far right. The infrared uh, has a long sensor life. It's not as sensitive as the other detectors here, but it doesn't false alarm. I did not like the heated diode field piece unit. It uh, false alarmed on just about everything and it just became more of a nuisance than what it was worth. The TIFF here, it does a pretty good job. They claim that it can't be poisoned as far as an overexposure to refrigerant and uh, has the Pinto diode. And then of course the H10, which everybody makes, uh, you know, talks about the most. For rightfully so, it's been around for 30 years, it's been updated over the years, and the thing has been pretty reliable. This is my second one. My first one I had was the PM. It did really good. And honestly, I think the PM did a little bit better than this particular one. Uh, this one has a better pump system in it. All these detectors have the same thing in common. They need a stable environment. You are up on a roof and you have high winds, you might as well forget it unless it's a humongous leak. That's where we're gonna come in handy with the AccuTrack. The AccuTrack is not affected by the wind because it's listening to the ultrasonic waves, which are somewhere around the 30,000 to 40,000 kilohertz. So this thing amplifies whatever it hears in that realm and then brings it down around the 1,000 hertz range so that you can hear the actual characteristics of what the noise is that it's hearing. It's actually made in the USA. It's pretty simplistic. It uses a 9-volt battery that has up to 200 hours of life, and uh, it's a replaceable battery. Nothing special there to have to purchase later. And uh, it's pretty well built. It's got one earphone jack there on the side, one heavy duty screw there, has one sliding volume control on the side here. This is uh, very smooth, does not have any static. And uh, what you're gonna hear in some of these videos, you're gonna hear static. And then uh, for my prior DJ days and pro audio that I still run, you know, it sounds like static uh, from the fader possibly. But what I've noticed is it's not. That's sometimes the sounds that you'll hear from the leak. It comes in a little case like this right here. Came with basic headphones. They have an upgrade version where you can get either the gooseneck or you can get the standard. The difference between the gooseneck and this model here, which was the original version, um, this piece right here unscrews and you can screw on the uh, sensing element here and it's like a stethoscope and you can actually hear inside of uh, devices like TXVs and steam traps and you can actually identify whether they're feeding through. It's like a little diaphragm inside there that basically transfers the noise from the stem there, which it looks just like the same diameter of a uh, thermometer probe. And you unscrew the tip that you had on there previously, which is kind of the cone that helps direct the sound into it. And you can screw on the uh, probe they've got here for more of a stethoscope style uh, diagnostic tool. You can put it up against bearings on motors. You can do it on steam traps, TXVs. And once you get uh, used to what the sounds should be, you can easily diagnose what's going on. The other gizmo they got here is this little hose, which I'm gonna make one that's a little longer. You can lose a little sensitivity if you go with a longer one, but this is gonna help you narrow down the sound where it's coming from. It literally just pushes right into the end of the snout there. And when you get uh, the area already located where your leak is, you can sit there and really narrow it down with this. This also gets rid of any ambient uh, noises that uh, that you're having issues with. This also can be used for electrical pickup of like ballasts that are going bad. You can pick up uh, arcing in breakers, several different things. The key with this detector is, is getting used to it and learning its characteristics of how it works. Uh, this can be used out in the high wind. It's not affected by wind whatsoever. Now the listening device I like to use are these Sony earbuds. They're a noise isolation. Uh, they do have noise isolation headphones that go over your ears. Um, these are a little bit dainty, so you got to be careful with them. Uh, they're about 50 some dollars. I happen to already have them, so that's the reason why I am using those. I did buy the COS uh, isolation headphones that you can uh, order with the kit, uh, one of the upgraded kits, but um, 
I didn't find them to be as efficient as what these are. These are a little bit louder for me and I kind of like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the videos I've shot and we'll just uh, listen to some of the things that I found. All right guys, I've been uh, really curious to know how this AccuTrack system works. I uh, tried something similar or may even been the first generation back in the 90s and uh, they uh, say this is the third generation VPE. There is two VPEs. I guess there's a second generation and a third generation. What I've got is it uh, hooked up to a Klein speaker here so that you can hear the noise. What we've got here is a Mitsubishi coil that I changed out a little while back and what I found is right in here. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over it with just the You can hear it. it's just a uh, hiss. I guess if you want to call it a hiss. It's kind of, uh, you got to know what you're listening for. And uh, and this is a really small one because if you look at the, I'll quit talking, but watch the uh, LED. Definitely right there. And we can spray it with the soap. It seems to be a little thicker, so it clings a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead and cut away at this and take a look at it a little closer. The leak is basically on the back side of this copper piece here. Um, I sprayed it and it makes some really funny noises when the uh, when the soap goes over top of it. Yeah, hear that funny noise? Kind of weird. You you can hear stupid things like touching your clothing a foot and a half away. And you can hear me touching my clothes. I speak with one of the ladies uh, at the uh, factory, and she said it really depends on what kind of hole or crack you've got. The rougher the penetration crack, hole, leak, whatever you want to call it, the more noise it's going to make. If it's really smooth, it's going to make a lot less. Um, I've noticed walking around with it out here in the wind, it's uh, not here in the wind at all, even when it's going right into the microphone. Looks like it's using like a PZO tweeter style device for the sensing element. And I did buy the Koss headphones, which is what they would normally come with. Yeah, it made a lot more noise. With the water. That was more the noise it makes with the water. The water is thinner. I mean, it's picking it all the way out here, which is a pretty good sized leak. But if you were up on a roof and the wind was blowing, your leak detector's not going to pick that up. <sighs> not very easily. This one here, you can see where it's leaked in the coil in here. And then You can see over here too, it's all in the same vicinity. This one's going to be a little bit better example. This is 56 pounds of nitrogen on it. We've got it plugged in. I can hear it already over here. I got it at half volume. It appears to me that there's probably more than one spot. But I mean, that's turned all the way down. Turn it back up. And it's picking it up from this distance here. So say you're outside and it's a windy day. This is a prime example where this would really come in handy. They, uh, they even say in the advertisement that the tool is uh, another tool to add to your arsenal for special situations and such as that.
All right, guys, hopefully the video was more informative for you so you can maybe make a better decision on whether it's something you'd be interested in looking into. For me personally, I think it's going to be good for a lot of different scenarios. I don't think it's going to be your only leak detector, but it's definitely going to be something to add to the arsenal in those situations where it's too windy or it's such a huge leak that it's so contaminated in the area that uh, the detector can't narrow it down. For all intents and purposes, I believe this to be one of the more accurate detectors out there. I've read uh, as many reviews as I could find on them. Uh, the Amp Probe out there is a lot cheaper. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on that one. I don't know exactly how good it is, but I do know how my Amp Probe uh, meter is, and most of the Amp Probe stuff is usually a little bit lesser line, and it definitely is not made in the United States. There also is the Inficon Whisper. Uh, I, those reviews on that one also were kind of mixed on what I've seen. There just really isn't that many reviews out there. To make this device work well, like I said, you're going to want some noise isolation earphones like the Sony possibly, or if you have a choice pair that you like that sound good. I definitely do not recommend the cheap ones that come with it. These here don't isolate anything and it lets a lot of extra noise in. The sound of a leak that you're going to hear is totally different than the other things that you're going to pick up. It will pick up clanging in kitchens and uh, silverware and things like that. It definitely has its idea places to be used at. Uh, if there's a lot of loud noise and stuff like that, they'll make a different noise. It definitely is going to screw with you, but it's not going to sound the same as what the leaks will. Once again, goes back to learning your equipment and getting used to how the machine works. And that's how you're going to be able to narrow it down in noisy environments. I do appreciate everyone taking the time to watch the video. Once again, if you would like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, please leave those down there. Just in case anyone from my company is watching, that last video there of the residential unit was one of my friends and not one of our customers. If you have any ideas for future videos, please feel free to also leave those down in the comments down below. Also, you can find my email, Facebook, and all those other wonderful things down there in the bottom. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.